Hello everybody, David Schuster here. Another day and more proof that Ohio Republican Senator J.D. Vance is a Donald Trump liability. By now you've probably heard about Vance's childless cat lady comments. Well, Vance is being dragged through the litter box <laughs> again, this time because the Harris campaign has unearthed another old video in which Vance echoes the same sentiments. Right, there are just these basic cadences of life that I think are really powerful and really, really valuable when you have kids in your life. And the fact that so many people, especially in America's leadership class, just don't have that in their lives, you know, I, I worry that it makes people more sociopathic and ultimately our whole country a little bit less uh, a, a less mentally stable. And of course, you talk about going on Twitter. Final point I'll make is you, you go on Twitter and almost always the people who are most deranged and most psychotic are people who don't have kids at home. Actually, the most deranged and psychotic are people with kids but who do not have help. <laughs> now, do people who have kids and help, are they less deranged, less sociopathic and psychotic than say people who have no kids whatsoever? I mean, I don't know, it sort of depends on the situation. All of us know families that are absolutely nuts, the children included, and we also know single people who have completely lost their mind. I think the point that J.D. Vance is trying to get at is that if you have children and the responsibilities that go with it, yes, perhaps there's a certain level of stability that maybe that forces you to have that people without kids aren't necessarily having to look at. But the way that J.D. Vance tried to phrase it was so offensive and so bizarre that it angered people across the political spectrum. Well, recently on Fox News, weekend host Trey Gowdy hosted J.D. Vance and tried to engage in a little bit of damage control. Watch. I've heard from many women, most of whom are conservative, and they would very much like to vote for President Trump and you, but Senator, they are disappointed. So nuns and priests aside, do you agree that there are people who very much love this country and are invested in its future, but they also happen to be childless? Oh, of course I believe that, Trey. And if you look at the full context of what I said, it's very clear the Democrats have tried to take this thing out of context and blow it out of proportion, which is what they always do, Trey, because they don't have an agenda to run on themselves. Democrats blow things out of context and they don't have a full pro-family agenda. Really? Things like pre-K, child care services, free school lunches, expanding child tax credits, raising working class wages so families have more to spend on things like groceries and other family related items like child care. Oh, and by the way, protecting kids and families from guns through common sense gun regulations. I mean, the argument from Republicans that there's not a pro-family agenda, well, if you want to reduce this just to a bumper sticker, you could argue that the Republican agenda is simply the pro-birth agenda, not pro-family, but pro-birth, and that once a child is born and out of the womb, well, then that child and their family, they're entirely on their own without any sort of government help or assistance. And you could also take it a step further and say that the only agenda Republicans really have is whatever their corporate donors tell them. If it's an energy company, an oil company that wants to continue to pollute the environment with fewer regulations, fine, no problem, the Republicans will be for that. If it's the National Rifle Association which says, oh no, we don't want any sort of restrictions on guns, we want more guns than ever, Republicans are fine with that. If it's the pharmaceuticals which want to keep prices high, oh yeah, that's the agenda for Republicans. It's the corporate donors that Republicans seem beholden to. Democrats, while they do have their own problems with corporate donations, at least one could argue that Democrats have a more pro-family agenda than Republicans like to claim. Now, a couple things about J.D. Vance, because clearly he is the, pl the blueprint for Donald Trump, only the problem J.D. Vance says is that he doesn't have Donald Trump's charisma. And what this shows is that it's not enough for Republicans in the future if Donald Trump, say, loses. It's not enough for Republicans just to replicate the MAGA policies the MAGA movement is much more than that. It is literally a cult of personality. And we're seeing that because on paper, J.D. Vance and other Republicans like Ron DeSantis and maybe even Ted Cruz, they can check off all of the MAGA boxes in terms of policy. But what they are missing is the charisma and authenticity that Donald Trump brings to a campaign and to politics. So when you fill up your pump, when you fill up your tank at the gas station, Maybe you should send a bill to Kamala Harris. You get the sense with J.D. Vance, who was just calling Donald Trump like Hitler a few years ago, that J.D. Vance is only faking his admiration now for Donald Trump because 
He wanted to be Donald Trump's running mate, and he is. And the same thing with Ted Cruz and the same thing with Ron DeSantis. It's hard to sort of know what they believe and what they truly stand for because they don't have the authenticity that Donald Trump seems to have. Now, we might authentically believe that Donald Trump is authentically crazy and a sociopath and narcissistic, but Donald Trump is who he is. If you meet him in person, if you see him on camera, if you see him at a speech, he's the same person. You know, I do the weave. You know what the weave is? I'll talk about like nine different things and they all come back brilliantly together. And it's like, and friends of mine that are like English professors, they say, it's the most brilliant thing I've ever seen. And that cult of personality is drawn to somebody who is that authentic. So when we think about the future, we think, okay, there's a possibility Donald Trump loses. What does the MAGA Republican movement look like in 2028? Well, Republicans and Democrats, if you go back to previous presidential nominees, there has never been a time in modern U.S. political history where somebody has been a nominee twice, lost twice, and gotten a third chance. Adlai Stevenson was the last of the Republicans, and he did not get a third chance after he lost twice. So Donald Trump, if he loses in 2024, that's it. The Republican Party is going to have a civil war. There's going to be a fight over the future and who will run in 2028. But I think the key message and the key lesson we should learn from all of this with the Trump experiment, and as we've seen with J.D. Vance and the problems that he has had in speaking and trying to articulate his positions and trying to show some level of humanity, is that this isn't just about policies with Republicans, and I would say it's less about policies and more about personality. That Donald Trump has proven the Republican Party can stand for style over substance. The style being Donald Trump's charisma, the ability to entertain and attract a crowd and be politically incorrect and funny to a lot of people. That means more, I believe, to the MAGA movement than any particular policy that Donald Trump has espoused. This whole thing about America first and not having troops overseas and focusing on things like the border and stopping immigrants, I think that is secondary. To me, the key issue for the MAGA movement and the future Republicans is who's going to grab this mantle of personal charisma and personality? Who's going to be able to say, I'm the most interesting person out there that I can communicate well, that I can laugh at other people, and then I can say things that are politically incorrect and get away with it. Donald Trump's the only one who's been able to do that. And to me, the future of the Republican Party is going to be a battle, again, over the stylistic differences that may exist between Republicans who want to run again, and not so much over the policies. Because as we've seen, J.D. Vance has articulated the policies of the MAGA Republican movement and he has not come across well at all. And in fact, I would say that J.D. Vance articulating the policies has turned more people off to conservative ideas than anything Donald Trump has said, even though Donald Trump may be saying the same thing. So that's my take on J.D. Vance, the stumbles that he's been facing, and what it all says about the future of the Republican Party and the MAGA movement. I'll be curious to see your comments in the comments section right here on YouTube. I'm David Schuster. Thanks for watching.